cults, coercion, and sexuality in society. These are the topics for the Frankie Files. I'm Frankie Tease, your host, and I'll continue to focus on my own family story as well as news and recovery info for those who've survived, especially the adult children of cults. New each Tuesday. See FrankieFilesPodcast.com for more. Trigger warning. Some people may find topics discussed in this episode difficult. Please proceed with caution. Today I'm bringing back one of our favorite guests and our expert on the topic of child sexuality, forced marriage, and child marriage in the United States. Sara Tasneem is reachable at Tasneem S, as in Sam, F as in Father, advocacy.home. Blog. You can also check the show note. She works with the Resiliency Foundation, Global Hope 365, the Tahiri Justice Center, and Unchained at Last. Today we will discuss the progress that's been made since her last visit to the show. I think that was in the end of 2022, the end of season one. She educates people through lectures and her blog. Sara Tazneem is an advocate publicly to end the practice of forced child marriage in the United States. She's a volunteer mentor with young women who need support before, during, or after experiencing forced child marriage. She aims to raise public awareness about forced child marriage in the United States, develop partnerships that support survivors, advocates, and nonprofit groups, and create change through planning, legislation, action, and support. And we'll hear much of that today. We are so excited to speak to Sara Tasneem again. You know, just want to read this article that kind of overviews it. I didn't even know the depth of it until you came in and started teaching me. I'm like, oh my God. And so that's why I found this article that I really like. So the article is, The Fight Continues to End Child Marriage in the United States, August 25th, 2021. Authors Paige Cassidy and Ty Himba Turner, hopefully I'm saying that correct. It's at unicefusa.org under stories. New York recently became the sixth state to ban child marriage with no exceptions. 44 U.S. states still allow children under the age of 18 to marry under certain circumstances. UNICEF, USA, and partners are working to change that. International conversations about child marriage often center on low-income countries, but the practice exists right here in America. I would like to add, good old U.S. of A. Between 2000 and 2018, almost 300,000 girls and boys in the United States were married before their 18th birthday. The consequences for these children are the same for children everywhere. Increased poverty, a higher risk of health complications, and lower educational attainment. So, Sara, your comment. Yes, this this article is mostly correct, although it is from 2021. So there have been some changes since then. Um, this is what we want you to tell us. So now there's 42 states because two more states have officially banned child marriage, um, which means under 18, no exceptions. A child was not able to get married in that state. So we now currently have eight states who have completely banned child marriage under the age of 18. And there's one um, right now that's kind of pending just uh, the governor's signature, which is Connecticut. If you have any listeners in Connecticut or even any East Coasters, there is a lot you can do. You can call the Connecticut um, governor and ask him to please pass the legislation. Um, There is a great website, Unchained at Last, and they have um, a map where you can just look at individual states and find out 
if there is legislation pending where you live. There's quite a few states where there is like active legislation, but um, again, we have eight states that have officially ended it. And so we're working now in 42 states to to try and end it. Um, there's okay. a lot there's a lot going on <laughs> right now and, and then from what i recall in our previous conversations there's no age limit in most states in states so like um for like i'll take my state for example where i live i live in california yeah. there's no minimum age to marry here in yeah. california uh with yeah. parental consent and judicial review and the problem with that is like some people will say wow like judicial review is a pretty high bar and you know wow like no parent would ever agree or consent to that well unfortunately when you're talking about children being forced into marriages it is more is mostly the adults in their lives who are forcing the marriage so mm -hmm. either their parents or guardians mm -hmm. or abusers or a combination thereof mm -hmm. and the judicial review can be as simple as just a rubber stamp that a county clerk um can mm -hmm. literally just stamp onto a form and um you know in some mm -hmm. counties like that it, it depends on how the county implements the law but mm -hmm. most counties um it's just literally a form there's definitely cases of children 10 years old, as young as 10 years old, getting married in the United States. So that should be just shocking in and of itself for some of your listeners. And we're not talking about a 10 year old marrying a 12 year old. We're talking about a 10 year old marrying an adult. Um, so an adult, for clarification, the age of majority is 18 years old. Right. And after 18 years old, you then become an adult un under the eyes of the law. Not, I mean, biologically, you're still growing, right? Under the eyes of the law, at 18 years old, you become an adult and you start to okay. then entering into a contract. This is really interesting to me. I wanna highlight this big time, big circle and big red pen around this. I just spoke to Brett Harper who was born in, um, into an adoption pretty young, like under age one. Then he ended up in these Christian troubled teen camps. I like to call them camps, but they're called institutions or boarding schools. But um, it's full on indoctrination and there is no right for the child. The child in his case was in Oregon and taken on a plane to Missouri. And then the his... Uh, custody is signed over to this transport agent and then to the boarding school. He taught me sort of like you that there's no rights for the kid. Um, in, in fact, even when they're in this boarding school, when they call their parent, the phone calls are monitored so they can't say, look, I'm being abused. I'm afraid to go to sleep so I don't get raped. You know, <laughs> they can't tell them. So the child actually has no rights. And I think that is really clear, like, um, in your marriage at 14, you know? Yeah, exactly. It's the same situation where you enter into a marriage with an adult. So essentially mm -hmm. that adult kind of takes over your guardianship in a way. Um, oh, oh my gosh. And, you know, in California, you also become emancipated under the law, but if you don't know that as a child, you don't really know what your rights are. Yeah, you, you're under the control of your abuser, so how would you find out? <laughs> you know? So it's it's just... Um... Okay, so we'll keep rolling through this article, which states, New York recently became the sixth state to ban childhood marriage in the U.S. with no exceptions. Again, this is 2021, but UNICEF, USA, and partners are leading the effort to end child marriage in the United States. On July 23rd, 2021, New York's bill outlawing child marriage, S3086 and A3891, became law, making New York the sixth state after Delaware, Minnesota, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island to ban child marriage without exceptions. The tweet was, New York Governor Cuomo just made New York the sixth state to ban child marriage eight before age 18. Congrats and thank you to UNICEF. Unchained at last. 
and Senator Salazar, Phil Ramos, 6AD, and everyone who made this possible, take action to end child marriage in your state by visiting stopchildmarriage.org. You're listening to The Frankie Files, frankiefilespodcast.com. So that was New York, and that was six states, so um, now there's eight that's correct. And I think what also, um, this was a great article, but also I think they, um, they didn't mention that in New York, uh, a survivor had come forward and had really lobbied for this legislation. And her name is Nyla. And um, she has a foundation now. It's called Nyla Amin Foundation. And she really fought for this legislation in New York. And she worked with um, Senator Phil Ramos uh, pretty closely on it. Um, So it really, it takes a combination of advocacy, um, like with like groups like Unchained at Last, Tahare Justice Center, Global Hope 365, and a lot of other folks that are out there fighting and in combination with survivors who make the issue more relevant to people and make it more understandable in a way that you can't do with just statistics and numbers. Um, I think when people actually hear from somebody who was forced into a marriage as a child, they pay more attention. And also you teach us specifics that we just can't fathom. How it happened, how it was a group effort and how you really never ever had a choice it was like wow disarming you so much trafficking now i want to go on the biggest barrier to ending child marriage in the u.s is lack of awareness amen to that while opposition can arise from a variety of sources the biggest barrier to ending child marriage in the u.s is a lack of awareness a recent survey found that nearly half of americans polled believe that child marriage is already illegal in all U.S. states. The remaining respondents believed that the practice was legal in five or fewer states. Without constituent education and public pressure, elected officials may not see the importance of pushing for legislation to formally outlaw child marriage. UNICEF's USA's advocacy work is critical to overcoming this obstacle and raising awareness and the ones you mentioned, which people can find in the show notes. I'll make sure of that. They also say they've had pushbacks from groups concerned that ending child marriage would inappropriately limit rights of a child or parent. (laughs) Cough. Marriage laws in 44 states permit child marriage with parental consent and or judicial approval. We now know that's a red rubber stamp by a clerk, perhaps. However, data suggests that judges often lack access to sufficient information to make this decision. Additionally, parental approval can often be synonymous with parental coercion. Yeah, especially in the case of an unexpected pregnancy, financial instability, or other situations that might influence a parent's decision. In all scenarios, child marriage limits the rights of a child and deprives them of an opportunity to control their future. I, all of that is a hundred a thousand percent correct that yeah. has not changed in any way shape or form and it mm-hmm. all of it is true um you know minors mm-hmm. are easily coerced and forced into relationships and that is why we have age of consent laws in most states um and these laws basically violate those those they're in conflict they're in direct conflict with age of consent laws. For example, here in California, the age of consent is 18 years old, yet the age of marriage is zero. So it is a loophole. It's a statutory loophole around age of consent laws. And there's a reason we have these laws in place. It's to protect minors. Um, Mm -hmm. But yet we're not doing that with laws that allow minors to get married to adults, period. Yes, and you showed us how some of these laws allow the very scenario you experienced, which was your permission slip 
from a father, the uh, man who had already taken you to another country, you were already pregnant when you got married, and it was at a drive through in Las Vegas. That's correct. So I was legally married after I had been raped for the past six months by my abuser um, on a daily basis. So I had evidence of that yeah. in front of the, the court clerk and they, mm-hmm. instead of, you know, slapping handcuffs on him, they stamped my marriage certificate, which basically put the handcuffs right back on me. And, you and, know, I'm listening to you going, I bet she said, well, at least he's marrying her. There's some weird idea out there that if yeah. you see a pregnant teenager, that somehow a marriage yeah. is going to fix that. Like, there's no fixing a pregnant teenager. <laughs> Guess what? The pregnant teenager is going to have the baby no matter what, so whether they're to. married or not. Yeah. But yeah. does it mean that they should be in a horrible, abusive relationship with a person mm. that may or may not have raped them? Uh, absolutely mm. not. The laws allow this. Back to the article. Closing the loopholes in state marriage laws is a crucial step towards protecting the right of all children to reach their full potential. The negative consequences associated with child marriage are a violation of child rights, especially those of girls, like the scenario you painted for us. 86% of child marriages in the U.S. involve a girl marriage to a significantly older man. Instead of permitting child brides in the United States, State governments should invest in systems that support vulnerable girls and families. As more states pass laws banning child marriage, the U.S. moves closer to achieving United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 5. We'll see how, you know, pertinent that is, which calls for the end of child marriage and female genital mutilation by 2030. Well, amen to that. UNICEF USA remains committed to ending child marriage, both in the U.S. and around the world. Success would bring the world one step closer to protecting children and ensuring that every child can grow up healthy and happy. Child marriage is a human rights violation. Mm, That's well said. Right. And it is considered a human rights violation because of the numerous harms that exposes minors to. So in no situation is a minor okay when they're being forced into a marriage. They're always going to be exposed to some type of abuse. And the abuses are so vast and so many that that's why they call it a human rights abuse, because Mm -hmm. you're exposed to um, sexual assault child sexual assault, rape, domestic slavery. servitude, yeah. slavery, um, mm-hmm. trafficking, you mm-hmm. name it. Like there's just so many abuses and mm-hmm. it's all wrapped up into this, what they call, you know, a marriage, which mm-hmm. in actuality is, is not a marriage. It's a prison sentence no. and it's a prison Absolutely. sentence with that includes abuse. Yeah. And that's the part that people are not seeing they're just seeing Mm -hmm. a pregnant teenage child and they're thinking well how do we fix this well you can fix it first of all by looking at how did that happen like maybe this person needs support maybe they're in a dangerous Mm -hmm. situation maybe there's not enough support out there for teenagers um who are experiencing abuse or, or sexual assault there's not um i know that you know there's not in some cases of survivors that i've spoken to they were experiencing sexual abuse within their family structure and then they were forced to marry their abuser because they had turned up pregnant Mm -hmm. and so our answer to pregnancy is is by saying okay you marry your abuser um i just don't think in 2023 that should be allowed in any shape or form and teenagers Mm -hmm. and girls and young children all need protection from this type of abuse They need more support and there needs to be more services out there for for folks that are experiencing sexual assault as children. Um, I just don't think there are systems in place to to support them. No, and I'm going to go out on a limb here. People can throw rocks at me. The elite make all these rules and it's very convenient for them to be able to pick and choose a pretty girl when they're 30 years old. 
I mean, it just works for them, right? You don't say no, right. you don't know, you don't have resources. And a lot of this is in quote cultures. And as you showed us in cults too. Exactly. It's, it has to do a lot with this idea of, um, you know, somehow like young girls or young women, um, or even young boys like need direction in their life. I've even heard it of cases where um, they use it to basically as a tool of like rehabilitating um, an LGBTQIA mm -hmm. person, which is mm -hmm. horrific if you think about it, forcing yep. somebody to marry against their sexuality. Like that's even worse. Mm -hmm. Sarah, I learned a term for that. What is it? Because it happened to me in my cult. I was made to be with women and I'm straight by nature, truly still. And so it's called a sexual disorientation. Wow. And people are co-opting that term. It's made me very upset. People think someone's confused. They're disoriented. No, no. It means, and if you look at in the DSM, you know, sexual disorientation is manipulating someone to be with someone else and freaking them the F out. Because wow. that's not what they want to be doing. It's horrible. Yeah. It's all going against your own self. And yes. Um, and then they got you, right? Right. It's, it's like, it's like I'm submitted completely. Yeah. See FrankieFilesPodcast.com for more. Your example was forced marriage um, when someone's not wanting to do that. Right. Their orientation. Um, doesn't let them you know right or if somebody is abusing them or and there mm -hmm. can be numerous reasons or if the um you know family is in financial trouble and they don't they can't um you know in their mind the, the right. girl is a burden or yeah. um just somebody to get rid of and and yeah. unfortunately a lot of legislators they can't it's hard for them to see that because they are coming from such privileged backgrounds or like this could never happen. Right. And mm -hmm. there's this false perception um, that there's just so many opportunities out here for, for young folks. And um, yeah, that might be true. in in some, in some, you know, privileged um, stratas of our social, you know, structures. Yeah, that might be true. But in other places where children are devalued and um, they're made to feel like burdens, that's not the case. Religious and cults is one of those places. And everyone thinks when you hear all of your story, they're thinking foreign agent, foreign this, foreign that. You mean domestic? It's right here in religious cults. It happened to me. I was obtained as a sex slave. You know, we both in different manners and it, it no one checks there is right. no checking because the religious cult exception fosters a pedophile it really has to be said you know and it's easy <laughs> and it's it is this weird religious exception it's your path it's your spiritual initiation blah 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 it's disgusting is what it is and yeah. so if we can realize that a person is you know every right to grow up as a human in a natural manner without undue influence on their sexuality. Can we just do this? It, that would Please. make so much sense. And difference in the world. <laughs> that would make so much sense. Why aren't we doing that, Frankie? Well, money. It's all about that trafficking money. They got videos. They did something with us. We don't know. And what? who profited? We don't know. Um, luring new members to cults. You were paraded. She's for sale. I mean, she's going to be a bride soon. Mm -hmm. Basically, when I was 12 years old, I was put out on that market. Um, and, God. you know, the, the man who ended up um, That's it. marrying yeah. me, he he had joined the cult um, about a year or so prior and had, um, mm -hmm. you know, had bought quite a bit of travel, you know, basically travel purchases for um, the cult family and um, put a lot of that on his parents' dime, basically on credit cards. And, you know, as payment, I guess, 
I was she his, uh, his child bride. I don't, mm -hmm. and you know, it was never probably in those exact terms, but definitely mm -hmm. men who joined and if they were wealthy and if they had money to spend on the, the group and towards mm -hmm. cult activities, then at some point, you know, they would marry a child bride because it was, a, it was a trafficking, it was a trafficking group. And one of the, one of the things that was going on in Absolutely. in my experience yep and when i researched like the word and the etymology of the word uh, virginity guess what i found it was I'm a farmer curious. who made it up she is a virgin i swear she's born no children and i want to give you to her in exchange for blah 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 so daddies are the number one pimps yeah, it's bad this to is that the truth. So much it's grooming hard. around it. Um, yes. So much grooming around uh -huh. it where like the purity, it's the same idea as like yes. purity culture. Save yourself for the man. Exactly. You can only be with one man and mm -hmm. eat. there's just so many rules around that just in and of itself. Like, mm -hmm. you know, just so like there's just so much around this it would like even down to like how you wash yourself and yep. uh, like so many things a lot of detailed uh instruction with yeah listening to i think you had somebody on your show i think it was daniela Masnek. Mm -hmm. she you know talked about children of god and like how they had instruction books well a lot of cults have instruction books but they're like in other forms so they're not maybe coloring books and they're not maybe like comic books but they're yeah but they're definitely in instructions and they'll read it from the bible here's why exactly and if you look at the bible and if, if you look at the quran um or if you listen to the hadith um you know you'll hear about prophets who married young girls yeah. <laughs> pretty black and white as far yeah. as like how they how it can be skewed in today's mm -hmm. world and i'm not saying that everybody who follows those religions you know practices those things no but you can you can have a cult that perhaps skews that yes. and uses it to their advantage especially 100%. if they happen to be a pedophile trafficking cult and there's too many there's way too many with not there's enough too many um oversight with just you know willy-nilly making up rules as you go along yeah. i mean 100 percent, and somehow making money off of it all you know right it's a scam. I guess and there's a market for uh, for children. Yeah. That's sad but true. I mean, I I laugh and I like I'm jesting, but at the same right. time, it's it's the only way that I can really um, kind of process some of this stuff because we're it's facing just so, utter darkness. Yeah, it's just so hard. Um, it's utter darkness, and it. what's upsetting me the most since I've been doing all my research and meeting wonderful people like yourself is realizing this is systemic. It's it's written in, and it conveniently, conveniently endorses everything a rich elite dude wants. He wants to see two girls together on video. Thank you. Okay, I want a young marriage so that um, she has a great uterus for my child. Excellent. What are we doing? <laughs> you had to go through that womb to get here. You have to respect women. We're not a rib of Adam. We're not ornate decorations for you. See, my cult said, well, you know, we've got it covered on all bases. There's going to be no coital sex. This is some twisted new age religion oh. stuff. And so they don't have babies to deal with. They don't have rape. I've had people say, well, well, at least you weren't raped. We have a lot of work to do, my friend. Yeah. I knew there was people out here doing this, and I'm new to the game, and your support has meant quite a bit. Thank you. Um, we don't really have a place for my issue. There's no laws about, you know, women touching each other under mental coercion, so um, it's a mess. If a kid can just be allowed to naturally develop. We also need to stop the misconception that this stuff is not happening here because it is. It's it's yeah. not happening. In, it is happening in foreign places, but it's also happening right here. Oh, yeah. And um, that is one of our biggest barriers to getting legislation mm -hmm. passed is that folks believe um, that this type of thing is just not happening here. Yeah. And from all the studies and everything 
um, that's out there right now on child marriage, you can easily access the information yourself and find out mm -hmm. that, in fact, child marriage is happening in the United States and has been happening since its inception. You know, there have been waves of trying to change that throughout the decades, but we are in 2023. Um, and trafficking where, is a yeah. financial cornerstone of capitalism going strong. Right. So thank you. Oh, my gosh. You always blow my mind with these details. Um, people can find you on Twitter and online where? Um, you can find me on Twitter at SF underscore Tasneem. And I'm also on Facebook at Sara Tasneem Advocacy. Um, and I also have a blog site, Thriving After Surviving, Sara Tasneem Advocacy. You've been on the show twice, and we're going to keep bringing this info because it's from the source, from, directly from the source. I'm excited uh, to hear how your story develops, and it's such an honor to keep having the voice that you bring so strong to people who need to know, and that's everybody. So listen, tell a friend, share, and big hugs, Miss Taz. Thank you. Colts coercion, and sexuality in society. These are the topics for The Frankie Files. I'm Frankie Tease, your host, and I'll continue to focus on my own family story as well as news and recovery info for those who've survived, especially the adult children of cults. New each Tuesday. See FrankieFilesPodcast.com for more.